It is equally important to fight bad arguments from the other side as it is to root out bad arguments on your own side. Because the only thing sometimes the people on the other side have to hold on to are the worst parts of yourself. So for instance, and I've noticed this come up over and over and over again. Are they going to do another debate or is that just completely off the table? I would be shocked um, because... Completely unrelated, did you hear that we made about Dylan being overly defensive during the debate moderation and feeding the serfs articles? I think Arisan read it on her stream. She might have forwarded it. Wait, where, what? Wait, can somebody link me? What is that guy talking about? Dylan Burns working with the serfs in the Lauren Southern debate. Uh-oh. In what world does the host go second, last? I doubt this has happened in any other debates Dylan has hosted. The host always has the final word. He didn't even give his closing speech before all of them, which would have still been very weird. He gave it second to last and gave the serfs the closing words. Dylan was very defensive over any criticism of the serfs to the point where it started to sound bad faith and disingenuous. I believe this for two reasons. Firstly, because he did not want to offend the serfs, but secondly, because some of the arguments he were attacking were given to the serfs by Dylan. Dylan also complimented the serfs on all the numbers he brought up, which I reckon Dylan had a hand in as discussed in point three. If you rewatch the debate, you can see there's a high correlation between these three things. Lauren and sometimes counterpoint speaking, Dylan typing on his keyboard, pulling up websites, white flashes on his face, and the serfs looking to his left to read his messages. There are times when the serfs is excited to reply, and for his whole reply, he's looking at the camera to his right, and then there are times when he's staring to his left for his whole discussion while struggling a bit more than usual to piece together his sentences. <laughs> Wait, does, this, does anyone have a timestamp of this happening? I'd be curious if there was a timestamp seeing this happen in real time, yeah. So this is Dylan and the serfs were working together against Lauren Southern. It's a conspiracy. To be clear, I think this is a crazy hater email. I don't think they were actually conspiring. I don't believe that. I, I, there's just no way that Dylan would risk it. I don't think so, right? Did you guys see what Lance tweeted? Boy, Lance was like, my goal wasn't to go there and win that debate. My goal was to just show up Lauren for being a fascist. <laughs> it's like, okay, wait. So at least you admit you don't give a fuck about any of the dead indigenous or tortured kids or whatever. You were literally just there to score brownie points. Like, that was all you really wanted to do. I didn't go there to have a wonderful time. I went there to call her a fascist to her face and say that her whole rebranding tour is a lie and she has to apologize for identity Europa, great replacement, white genocide, blah, blah, blah. And then this guy came in. So you used the genocide of indigenous Canadians as a political prop to lure Lauren Southern into a debate just to dunk on her? Did you have to pretend to care about indigenous issues to farm content views and social credit? Has all your coverage just been a huge grift when the mask accidentally slips? <laughs> Wait, when is this? Is this gonna be not safe for work? Hold on. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. She's already she's already directed all the terms of service, all right? I I've done every single thing she's asked. <laughs> oh my god. You're such a bitch, Lan. Jesus. Uh oh, I joined. Do you want to talk briefly about that debate, if you want? Sure, what about it? I think we basically agreed that, would you agree with me that overall, it's probably made the fight, like what I said in that tweet, like in terms of the Twitch space, it's probably made um, the optics of people who try to fight for indigenous reconciliation even harder now because of yeah, how I, my point of view on all this recently has been with way more broad than this conversation but it's just that like any time people begin with an unfactual foundation it just it makes everything impossible from that point on because your credibility and when i say your credibility i mean like your credibility in terms of like the side that you're on is just completely destroyed that's why i think i think there are two parts 
that are equally important. I think that it is, I will say this and I will feel very confident. I think it is equally important to fight bad arguments from the other side as it is to root out bad arguments on your own side. Because the only thing sometimes the people on the other side have to hold on to are the worst parts of yourself. So for instance, and I've noticed this come up over and over and over again, the most dog shit CRT takes that for some reason, some people are compelled to defend, even though they shouldn't be like, um, yeah, I, I think that, that that shit needs to stop as soon as possible. Well, and it's it's especially embarrassing. Oh, oh someone's calling me. Weird friend number. Um, it, it's annoying because, like, as I was watching, I didn't watch the whole thing. I joined like halfway through, mm -hmm. but there were there were very clear moments when Lance could easily respond to a lot of the things that Lauren and what's the name of the other person? I'm not sure. Um, it was Lauren and a guy named Connor Points or Counterpoints. Yeah, so Lauren and Connor would say things, and then instead of actually, because <laughs> there, there's a lot of information out there and basic knowledge about the residential school system that you could point to. Mm -hmm. You could point to very specific schools, very specific instances that happened at various schools, but instead he kind of retreats in like i think it was mostly just ad hominems most of the time yeah. or restatement that no there definitely was genocide and if you're just if you're just denying that then you know you're being bad faith or whatever mm -hmm. um and for some reason they spent i don't know how long talking about um mother what, what's it called the the archaeological technique to figure out if there are bodies underneath the the soil or whatever uh, uh, the gpr scanning or whatever yeah yeah gpr like i don't even know why that wasn't necessarily being discussed because you could even say because for one thing we've known that there were mass atrocities that happened at residential schools before any of these graves were found the only reason it's really significant is because the media is now reporting on that i mean indigenous like the their family members went missing. Mm -hmm. This is this has been. It's not even an open secret. This is just common knowledge um, that generated, you know, intergenerational trauma. And there were many cases of abuse that you can point to that are within government documents that you can point to uh, instances of deliberate deliberate neglect, right? And mm -hmm. I I just I don't understand why Rabbit and uh, Lance didn't spend time talking about these cases and why exactly you have to have the whole semantical debate about whether, you know, genocide actually, because yeah, but like Lance the problem, the problem is, um, as Canadians, the, the feeling that I get is that the broader story that's being sold with the grave thing is this concept of these mass graves being newly discovered where they never knew any children were before that were like just all killed and thrown in a pit. Rather than what's actually happened is, as you said, indigenous communities have known about these cemeteries or these sites, and they've taken people with the technology there now to say like, hey, can we start to locate some of these or whatever? Like, that's actually what's happened. It's not that they're like, they randomly scanned in an area like, oh my God, there's 200 dead children here. This is crazy. But that's the idea that everybody's being sold. In. And I'm pretty sure that's what Lance and that rabbit dude think actually happened, just based on the way they talked about the conversation. Like when that well, guy but, said like, uh, like, what is a mass grave? Well, it just mass. It just means there's a lot of bodies. That's not what mass grave means. Why would you even say say something so fucking stupid like what the fuck by your definition literally every single cemetery is a mass grave like oh did you go to the mass grave yesterday and visit grandpa like yeah like what what a oh. wait wait <laughs> that's what we said let him, let's let him finish we've denied <laughs> mass graves exist even though the definition of mass is big so at this i mean so on the topic of whether or not like genocide, for example, happened, like I, we basically we've covered this before that mm -hmm. recently in in the literature, like, for example, the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission, their whole string of reports refers to it really almost always as cultural genocide. It very rarely uses that word sure. uh, because of the political baggage that it carries, of course. But within like actual literature in indigenous studies, there has been a movement to reclaim the word genocide, you know, and you talk about the UN Genocide Convention and international law and you reference, you know, Raphael Lemkin and whatnot mm -hmm. um, as, as, you know, because you have this political force behind the word genocide that isn't there behind cultural genocide, you know, that's a whole empirical argument. But that's not even what they they were discussing. Instead, Lance chose to try to actually defend genocide as physical like that. That's not 
I, I, I just, I can't even. Has well, he the read problem is like, there's the like, subject? no, yeah. The problem is like, there are a lot of good discussions to be had around like all the topics there. But Lance and that other dude like literally didn't know anything about anything. Like it sounds to me, um, and I bet money on this, and I know I would win and be right. All of their information basically just comes from like skimming Twitter headlines. Um, because they didn't know anything about a single topic they talked about, um, and all, and I've I've learned everything that I've learned. I would say collectively, I've done maybe maybe thirty to sixty minutes of reading slash research. That'd be like my guess on this. Um, they didn't know anything about that ninety six school that shut down or the court case around it. They didn't know what GPR scans were. They didn't know why they and? were GPR scanning. They didn't know like when that Dr. Bryce report was even filed. Probably don't know anything about the progress on the Truth and Reconciliation recommendation. Like they didn't know anything about any topic they brought up. Like it was like they expected to come in, rattle off some Twitter headlines, and win. Like they didn't think the other side would prepare at all. It was unbelievable to me. Yeah, like I, I just from the very get go, you there are a few discussions right that you can have. You can have well, is it actually should it be properly considered genocide or not based on you know, uh, you know, is that a pragmatic, uh, is that a helpful thing, etc. To be had and does it advance the actual goals of you know uh residential school survivors and whatnot so there's that discussion you can have mm -hmm. you can then have the discussion of um like were there actual atrocities that were intentionally inflicted upon indigenous children in residential schools mm -hmm. the answer to that is also obviously yes um but there's there's no space for the discussion and i've never really seen someone try to try to actually claim this that you know that catholic priests or government um, workers were like rounding up indigenous children, shooting them like, you know, when I think of mass graves, I think of like, you know, Srebrenica or like yeah, Bosnia, where you that's, line them up along the cliff and yeah, then shoot them that's all That's what a mass grave is. That's what mass graves mean. Not just like places where lots of people were buried. Yeah. No, I mean, they're unmarked graves. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how the chiefs, the, the well, one specific chief described, I think the 700, 716 graves that were found they described they even said it's specifically not ma a mass grave it is a, a cemetery that graves. yeah that was like they either lost the headstones or that just wasn't maintained or like that yeah it's a little bit more complicated um yeah it just sucks because like it sucks because like if there's a position if one is the most left-leaning position or rather if negative 10 is the most left-leaning position and 10 is the most right-leaning position the problem is that like by all the facts, you could get most people to agree to like negative five, but people want to start all the way at like negative 10 by making some shit up. And then like by the time people hear arguments, they're like at like four or five, like on the plus side, because they don't even believe anything you say anymore. It's like, well, you lied about this and this and this and this. Like, why the fuck would we think any of this is happening? Like, it's so irritating. Yeah. I want to say, though, that there are specific, you know, reflecting on it, that there are movements, I think, in... I keep saying the literature, but just, you know, experts on the topic mm -hmm. who want to um, who want to sort of weaken. So they're not talking about cultural genocide per se, but they also don't mean genocide in the sense of, you know, the Holocaust mm -hmm. or, you know, you know our, our typical cases of of genocide, but want to weaken it enough and actually still call it a genocide, but say it entails more than just cultural genocide. True. And I think maybe that's what Lance is trying to reference. I think it was. Um, you're the, giving way too much credit, but okay, go ahead. Well, the the commissioner, the commissioner of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, uh, Marie Wilson, even said, you know, it. I, I would qualify their experiences listening to the survivors, mm -hmm. listening to the survivors. She said, I would classify their experience as a genocide mm -hmm. because sure. they didn't describe it as a cultural genocide. They described it as a genocide itself. Mm -hmm. But that's very different than the conclusion of the Truth and Reconciliation. Um, report saying that cultural genocide actually happened. Instead, it is the survivors of the residential schools saying that the way they describe their own experiences is one of genocide as opposed to one of cultural genocide. And I mean, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And that kind of can go into the pragmatic discussion of whether using that term is useful or not. But that doesn't change the facts of the matter mm -hmm. about whether a genocide actually happened or not. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that they describe it is not... I'm, obviously, it is very important because that is data. But you understand what i mean that the actual existence of a genocide occurring or not is not dependent on what an in, one individual thinks happened mm -hmm. um you actually have to provide you have to provide a lot of evidence to establish something like a genocide is happening 
Yeah, you know? especially, and that's the thing that irritates me the most, and I pushed back on this a lot a few months ago, maybe even in talking, oh, I think we were going to talk about it, maybe we didn't. I'm really uncomfortable characterizing anything as an ongoing genocide, because in my opinion, an ongoing genocide demands, like, violent action immediately, because ongoing genocide implies that somebody with a great deal of power <laughs> is currently deliberately you know, trying to, like, MGSD erase or destroy so a group I of people. See the because if you want to tell me that there was a genocide in Canada, I'd probably believe that. There was probably a genocide in almost every country related to the indigenous populations because they did actually want to destroy or remove an entire group of people and there was intentionality behind there. I would agree with that in, an, in a heartbeat. Yeah, don't you think that's different than the black population in the US? This is the problem that I have. And I don't really care that much about like the words or the definitions, but here's the problem that I have, okay? Let's say that I was given two different countries. Let's say that in one of those countries, somebody told me that a population was being genocided, and then in another country, somebody told me that there was a bunch of systemic conditions leading to the erasure of a group of people. In the first country, I would need to do one thing first, is I need to find out, are all the people there genocidal? Does the public support the genocide of a population? If that wasn't the case, well, now I need to find out which aspects of the government are covertly involved in this. There needs to be investigations, there needs to be prosecutions, maybe war crime trials or something, um, if it's an internationally defined genocide, right? We need to find those people, we need to make them accountable, bring them to justice, and then hopefully the system will begin to reorient itself in order to alleviate the concerns of the indigenous populations. That would be the goal. But in the second country, if there wasn't like this explicit intentional genocide occurring, well, then it's just, okay, we have a whole bunch of systemic issues. We need to come together. We need to figure out different ways to approach and solve these problems because what we're doing right now isn't working. The way that you would address the problems in each country is wholly different. And this is why I don't like using a word like genocide to define what could just yeah, be it's, like it's bad just, systemic problems because now you're going to have people it's just looking. because you need a bad guy. You well, for like genocide, that's really all it comes down to, like cartoonishly, you need a bad guy. The results. Well, no, no, no. In both you need a you need a bad guy. I don't need a bad guy. Sure. And so, like, when people start pushing that narrative, and then you start to see like fucking like twenty plus churches or whatever over the past few months have been burned down. It's like, okay, well, fuck. Like, I mean, that's kind of the response that you would expect if you're legitimately trying to say that there is a current ongoing genocide. You know? Yeah, and it's tricky because. Like it, it's a commission, right? And the commission didn't have the legal purview. Like they were not investigating whether genocide occurred in the first place. So I'm not really, in, I, I don't often understand why people are referencing the document as establishing that because by the very nature of the report, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report was not, it, it wasn't within the legal bounds. It was a post judicial review, mm -hmm. right? Um, to help, you know, settle this massive, um, class action uh, lawsuit uh, against the Canadian government. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it was not it was not meant to determine the type of conclusions that people like Lance or you know other people on the left want to say it does. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be referencing something more than that in order to do that. And these people just don't have the knowledge. Yeah, uh, to do any of that. Yeah, yeah, in order to actually make those types of arguments. And so, you know, as someone who's interested in you know cares about indigenous rights obviously mm -hmm. i i don't even know i don't even know how you begin having the like for, for someone like thorn southern like what what would be the tactics um that you would use because ultimately i i think people are just using it and trying to be a bit contrarian about it in order to gain track well uh, like and that's the question and that's the issue because it's hard to tell where because based on the concessions that like lauren I don't know if you call them concession, but based on things that she did say, it sounds like even for somebody, I don't know how far right she is today, but for somebody as far right as she is, it seems like even she agrees that there were like atrocities that were committed in the residential school system. Like, so if somebody that far right even agrees with that, then it seems like you've got way more common ground than it seems. So why would you start with something so divisive and so like unfactual? Like it's just, it's so stupid, yeah. That the white yeah. rabbit guy too is like the bigger disappointment than Lance. I, I don't know oh, how no. much of that debate Sh you listen to, but oh my God, what an absolute fucking clown. Sh Connor, shut the fuck up. Lord, please, for the love of God. Tale of Twin Rabbits, I'm pretty sure your brain is running on 1995, okay? Never mind. Connor, fucking, you're clear for takeoff. <laughs> We're fucking 30 minutes into this goddamn debate talking about, like, <laughs> I don't know, terms about murder and descriptive <laughs> reality and history and all that kind of shit. And you want to talk to Lauren about fucking GPR and whether or not she can offhand fucking come up with a new way to conduct anthropology? I don't give a shit catch up because basically what you're doing right now is you're acting smarter than everybody else in the room while saying absolutely nothing absolutely 
fucking true. Okay. He reminded, he spoke like Vosh. Uh, and it really, really but there's a lot of people, like you can tell when someone's watching Vosh because they start to speak like him. Maybe. And yeah. actually, that really comes back to you because you influence the way that Vosh speaks. So you can actually recognize parts of you and these monsters that you're creating. So Thanks. I think my third generation hold... clones, yeah, my demon monsters. Exactly. Moments. You're you are partially to blame for all of this. Oh. So, uh, am I trying? But you know what? I, I, I are they going to do another debate, or is that just completely off the? Table? I would be shocked um, because there are a lot of kind of like I personally think that Lauren was involved in stuff that was way too far right for anything I would find acceptable. Oh, yes. But there is a lot of exaggeration there, and Lance plays into it. Um, so for instance, like she was never like shooting flares, like at immigrants or whatever, like, th like a lot of it is heavily exaggerated. So the problem that's going to happen, and this is, I don't think he'll actually do this. Actually, he might, his ego might be big enough to do it. The problem is that if Lance goes into a debate with Lauren Southern, Lauren is going to come out of that debate looking like she actually wasn't involved in anything far right at all, because all of Lance's claims are going to be staked way too extreme. And they're not going to actually like trace back to reality much. And she's going to have like 50, um, the, I'll just say that she has a lot of evidence of what, because of stuff not on like Wikipedia, she has a lot of evidence for like what actually happened or what she was involved in that is contrary to a lot of like the really popular left leaning narratives. So it would be like a really bad conversation for him to have. Yeah. And the other thing though is, I mean, even with someone like Lauren, mm -hmm. that I don't think that she was really engaging with the issue. Like, I remember she was talking about like, oh, you know, I want to see what we should really do is we should find those individual um the individual actors who committed these crimes and you know yada yada and i think she eventually said you know but there's you know it's been however many years since that happened so but the other thing is that i i don't really know indigenous people who want that I, i've never heard and i know quite a few residential school survivors none of them are asking for that mm -hmm. right because for one thing that's incredibly emotionally an emotionally draining experience to go on the stand and you know what is basically a settler dominated legal system let's let's be frank um to then you know try to prosecute these individual governmental workers or or catholic priests or or whoever it may be that that's just not something that's really on the table mm -hmm. um so it seems like a lot of the discussion about the topic are it's completely useless because these are not the things that need to be talked about when we talk about, you know, indigenous reconciliation. Sure. Uh, we have to actually be talking about, well, what can the government do now? Yeah. I think the point of bringing that up, though, is that like something that's very frustrating is that the legal system, a lot of people have a misconception that the legal system works like a TV show where every murder, all of these things are solvable as long as you like have like the smartest guys researching it. But when it comes to like sexual molestation cases or that stuff that's like 20, 30 years old, even something that's current day, if nobody's willing to like come out and testify, like you're pretty fucked. Like you're never really going to solve any of this shit. Like it's just fucked. Um, and I think that was, I think because Lance was trying to say like, oh, like why aren't all of these cases being worked on or whatever? And it's like, well, I, I mean, like, unfortunately, like they just never will be. Right. Um, and I think he was arguing that the Catholic church should release all the records for all the priests that worked at those schools. But I mean, given that they're already burning down churches, I would be pretty, it would be probably not good to release the names of everybody that was involved in it. You know? Yeah. And <sighs> I, I agree to an extent, but it's also just, it's difficult because like, for example, there are a lot of, like, I think you and I still probably disagree on the matter, you know, fun. Like, do I think that the Canadian government is committing genocide right now? Obviously no, obviously not. Mm -hmm. But the Canadian government is still taking and has recently taken active steps that don't point towards reconciliation. And that's what's very frustrating, I think, to Indigenous people, is that the government is not being as transparent as it needs to be, is not assisting in the way that they need to. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what should really be talked about. You know, like the Canadian government, uh, they were destroying documents um, that would have been relevant to the conclusions made by the, uh, by the report. Um, a lot of people don't know that, but the Canadian Supreme Court made it legal to destroy uh, documents from the Department of Indian Affairs and its subsequent um, agents or subsequent uh, departments, you know, if they are 15 year, years old mm -hmm. uh, and they did destroy a ton of documents. I mean, that that to me is clearly a step that the Canadian government took to reduce its legal liability. And they are spending a, a ton of money fighting a lot of indigenous people in court to prevent them from getting 
the type of reparations that they probably rightfully deserve. Sure. Right. So th those are points that those are things you can point to that are active steps made by the Canadian government that, in a sense, continue the process of cultural genocide. Because that's just to say they are not really seeking reconciliation in you know in what could be its true and genuine form. Mm -hmm. um, and the media also fucking sucks at talking about the issue. Like the CBC, it, the reporting on on the entire issue is just really. But but that that's the same for any issue ultimately, yeah, sure. right? Like yeah. news companies are reporting news for clicks and for monetary profit. Um, and ultimately they are now reporting on this because it's generated a lot of traction but you know they were not reporting on these it, like if you look at the reports that came out from the oka crisis um in the early 90s like the way that they described indigenous people were like horrific but you know now the overton window has shifted and all of a sudden oh wait no we have to be you know we have to recognize that indigenous people are actual people mm -hmm. uh and whatnot so it, it's a process of coming to terms with you know what you know canada has done to indigenous people which i think there seems to be relatively broad agreement on but the disagreement lies in what should the canadian government do right now and what is it actively doing that's where the discussion needs to be but no one's fucking talking about that instead they spend you know two hours debating what the definition of genocide should be or what the definition of a mass grave is mm -hmm. or like that that's completely fucking useless yeah yeah i agree who does that help? Probably nobody. All right. Say your piece. I got one Reddit thread to read, then yeah. I'm going to go to sleep. It's late. Well, that, that's all I got. Um, you can follow bath underscore boy with a nine. That's all I, on Twitter. That's all I have. Oh. All right. I love you. Be careful. Stay I, safe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, actually, wait. I want to say I'm willing to have a debate with Lauren Southern if she wants to, as someone who is actually knowledgeable on the subject. And I've spent a few years studying residential schools and the history of the Indian Act. I would love to have a discussion with Lauren. And Destiny, I think you'd be a fantastic moderator for that debate. Okay, I'll so, keep that in mind, okay. Yeah, and all proceeds could go to charity or whatever. Right, know. all right. Um, I just, there's a lot of lost ground that has to be made up, so someone's gotcha. gotta do it. Okay. Okay, have, have a good go. night. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Lord Lance, I love you, but this was a dumpster fire.